Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. I'm outside for this one so I hope you can hear me over the traffic noise. Um, I thought I would do a video experimenting with some natural dyeing or sort of natural printing really because I, I just sort of stick them on the fabric. So last night I left a whole load of fabric sitting in a sort of vinegar and water mix to soak overnight. I'm not going to be using all of this, I'm saving some for a bit later for something else. And if you're interested in how much vinegar is in there, this is a 568 milliliter bottle of vinegar and I've used I would say just over a third, nearly nearly half actually, I, <laughs> just to be on the safe side. And I've, in the past I found vinegar to work really nicely, so. So in here I've got, this is a load of cotton gauze. Now that's what I'm gonna save for later. What I'm gonna try now is, I don't know what fabric this is, to be honest, I have no idea. It might be a silk viscose blend. I'm just thinking about it, actually I'm gonna save that for later as well. So what I'm gonna, be using right now these cushion covers which I think I got in a stash of vintage fabrics and they're not finished yet there's no there's no fastening they're just basically squares that have been sewn together I will have to insert a zip if this works but I do want to make some autumn themed cushions for the living room so I'm gonna have a go at natural printing those I've no idea if it will take to this fabric I have no idea what this fabric is but I thought I'd give it a try and the other thing I'm going to use is some pure silk so I'll give that a try so behind me is a sycamore tree which has just planted itself, it's basically a weed. I have tried these leaves before and they've worked really quite well for natural printing. So this is basically the reason why I'm getting on with this job today, because I want to get rid of this sycamore, I don't want it here. When I'm sitting down that end of the garden I want to be able to see this beautiful selection of roses that I've got flowering right now. So I want to cut that down. So I'm going to use those leaves for some of it and also over here I have a eucalyptus tree. I actually have a couple. One here looks more like your traditional eucalyptus. This one's a different variety which currently seems to be shedding its leaves all over the garden. So I'm going to pick up all these leaves, give them a go. In the past I've done some natural printing and dyeing for Khaleesi costumes. I don't know if you watched Game of Thrones but in series one she wore a very rugged, I think in the series it was actually leather but I used a cotton, like a very thick cotton muslin I used. But for that because I wasn't after any particular leaf shapes I just used anything from around the garden that happened to be growing. I used dandelion leaves. There's a weed around here that grows that's pretty good as well. Going on a tangent, look at this cat. That's what I've got down by my feet right now. There's usually some over here. I don't know if you can see it. This weed here with the red leaves, I don't know what it's called, but I have quite a lot of this growing around my garden. I've used that before. That comes out really well. But today I'm going to have a go at just using one variety of leaf because I just want to experiment on what works well rather than just trying a variety of things and never really knowing which one it is that's working. So I'm going to do two separate lots of dye pots and um, yeah, experiment, see how we get on. Okay, I'm inside now and I've got the three cushion cover bundles underneath. It's an aluminium pan. I try and get that a little bit hotter because I don't know what this fabric is. For all I know, this could be a complete disaster, but it seems pretty sturdy fabric and I think it can take a boil. And what I'm gonna do is just rest the, um, the silk bundles on top to sort of steam and I'll just keep turning it over every now and then. Okay, we'll just have to, I'll just leave it there to simmer for about, I don't know, close to an hour maybe. And then I'll leave it outside in the sun for the rest of the day. I have to say the eucalyptus is making the kitchen smell wonderful. 
So the saucepan finally cooled down. It stays hot for quite a long time actually. So what I've done is now I've taken the little bundles back outside and, and just laid them in a bin bag because I want them to carry on heating but I don't want them to fade in the sun. So I've just laid them there. Just sort of tucked in there. I just left the saucepan there to stop it from blowing away and I'll probably leave that now overnight. Hello, it's now a day later. I'm gonna leave, I've decided to leave the natural dyeing things in that black bag for another day. But I thought I would show you what I did with the rest of the fabric that I treated with vinegar. I left it in here overnight. It's had a few dead blossom petals added to it. But yesterday I washed, I hand washed a load of Indian fabrics. There's some there. There's some still drying on the line, but most of them are packed away again now. But as I, I've known before when I've done this that the they're not dye fast and I've managed to get some beautiful shades before with the water that I just washed them in. Yeah, I mean it's quite, it's come out quite pale but I've got this lovely lilac-y colour. So that was the big silk square, that's a really pretty shade, quite pale, don't know how well that's going to wash. I think these two, this one's a bit more plummy, these weren't from the same bolt of cotton gauze, I think one was untreated and one was treated i can't remember which is which now and not really natural dyeing but still still making use of what we've got <laughs> so i'm going to run these through the delicate cycle in the washing machine now and i don't think they're going to pick up any more dye than they've done so far and see how well they wash hello well it's a couple of days later and i can't wait any longer so i'm going to open this up now i have to say look at the can you see the color in the saucepan of the water that was left so if I was just doing dyeing, I would have got a, quite a rich orange there, I think, from those leaves. So here we go. And I'm really excited to see what the results are. The silk is looking promising, particularly the eucalyptus. I'm worried I didn't bundle these tightly enough. There is definitely some take up of the dye on the outside of the cushion cover. I think this one is the one I did with the, with the eucalyptus leaves. So we'll start with this. Well, I don't know if you can see, it's quite bright out here. There is definitely some printing going on on both sides. You can see a bit more, a few shapes of the leaves here, but it's not very strong. I have to say it's not very strong. I think I might just redo it, go over it again. Yeah, and do the whole process again. I think that's what I shall do. Okay, next we have the sycamore leaves. Okay, this was not successful at all. There is some shading in a sort of quite a nice, pale green colour, almost yellow actually, but really there's not much to speak of with that. So I might go over this with some eucalyptus leaves as well. That was not a success. So I'm guessing the second one will be the same. But you see, I am working with a fabric. I have no idea what the content is. Yeah, this is the same. There's, there is some faint colouring of uh, a nice green but it wasn't at all successful but I have used the sycamore leaves with success in the past so I think this is just down to a difficult fabric but when I've made Khaleesi costumes it's worked really well so I think let's try the silk and this is the silk with the sycamore leaves maybe they work better later in the summer with all natural dyeing the time of year does make a difference so perhaps early summer is not the best time to be dyeing with sycamore yeah, it's not been great on the silk either. Definitely better on the silk than on the thick woven fabric. Not great, I'm a bit disappointed, I'll be honest. There's definitely some nice colouring on the silk, but it's not the actual prints of the leaves I'd hope to get. So, so far this has not been... I, I've got my fingers crossed now then for the eucalyptus on the silk because I'd like something to be really successful on, the, on this video. Yes, that is definitely more successful. You can actually see the imprints of the leaves on this one. I did wonder whether um, using the dead leaves that had fallen onto the ground, perhaps they're not the best leaves to use either. Perhaps one straight off the tree would give out a bit more dye. But I like it, I like it a lot. I think uh, I will probably make a fairy dress with this silk and I think that will give it a really nice sort of forest fairy feel. So I'm looking forward to working with it. I've got the bucket over there ready and I'll just give it a very quick hand wash and hang it out because I think it's due to rain this afternoon. So I'm just gonna do that. 
So here's more of a close up view. The sun is very bright again today, so I'll sort of try and give you shade and light. <laughs> These two are the sycamore, as you can see, close up. There's not a lot of dying to speak of, and this is the silk. Yeah, I'm quite happy with. This is a close up of the cushion cover with the eucalyptus. As you can see, there's some nice actual leaf printing on here. And here's the silk. I'm quite pleased with that. The colours are very varied. You've got some reds, some gold. By the way, this is the result of the lilac, the sort of purpley dye that I put the cotton gauze in. As you can see, it faded a lot in the wash. So I've kept this one because this seemed to be the strongest colour. So actually what I did was I popped it in this box which was the first lot of water from my first wash of the Indian clothes. Those are currently in the wash and I'll show you the results of those in a minute. Bundle number two cooking away. You can see how purple my hands have gone touching all those pink Indian clothes. And this is the cotton gauze that's been through that darker pink leftover dye. I've had much stronger results in the past, but it's still gone a very, very pretty shade. Hello, this saucepan has been sitting out here for, I think, more than a week. So let's, uh... oh, it's gone mouldy. That's a bit gross. That is a bit gross. <laughs> Hopefully the results will be a bit more, a bit stronger this time around. I left them sitting in the water as well this time that they were cooked in. So far, it's looking quite good. So here are the results, definitely an improvement on the last time. Not, I mean, you can still, you can see some shapes of the leaves. This one's a good one. That's a good one. Some good ones here. It's a bit drizzly, but I'm gonna get them in the washing machine now anyway. Well, I have to say this whole video has been a little bit of a fail. I'm really, really sorry if you've come to this for the first time seeing the title and it's not been all that helpful because the, the cushion covers are now washed and most of the natural dyeing just washed out with it. There's still some evidence of natural printing and I still like it as a natural looking cushion cover. I mean the bits that lasted, well I mean I don't know what this was, maybe it's just rust off the saucepan or maybe even just like flies that got in or something. There's more up here and that's been more successful than the leaf prints. You can see them very faintly. Yeah, that's quite a good one there. I'll put the video up anyway because it's interesting to know what works and what doesn't. The silk looks very pretty, but I have to say I'm really surprised with the results because it's really busy here today because it's the weekend the Glastonbury Festival would have been on but it's not on this year, but a lot of people have come along anyway. So I'm really sorry about the traffic noise. I'll try and talk in between. Yeah, I'm really surprised about the sycamore because I've used that before on cotton and got really good results, really nice, proper leaf imprints. And the only thing that I can think of that's different is that I, I usually use salt with cotton, but I thought vinegar worked better with silk. I have to, I haven't used eucalyptus very much, but when I've seen pictures online, they've had much better results than me on silk with no mordant at all. So I don't, I, I don't know. I, I am a bit disappointed. I have to say that I haven't had really nice crisp imprints of the leaves. Maybe I didn't wrap it tight enough, but that's what experimenting is all about. So I will keep trying. If you're interested, I'll take you along with me. Maybe I'll repeat this later in the year. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button to see more of this sort of video. I do lots of sewing videos and vlogs in between as well and crafty stuff. So if you're interested in all that, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.